Carbon footprint, a word that we all have heard of. It is the total emissions of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide, caused due to our activities. When we say this, we picture smoke from factories, large vehicles, etc. Does that mean this is a problem we cannot contribute to solving? We don't realize how simple things like a plastic water bottle contributes to this problem. The truth is, everything we do generates its own carbon footprint. We often think we have a small role to play in environmental issues like this. But small changes make a big difference. We must start on an individual level to make our best contribution. As students, we spend lots of time at school. So naturally, the school as a whole generates its own carbon footprint. The human tendency is to discuss the negative things around us. We keep cribbing about problems, but don't try to resolve them or find solutions. So instead of this, we explore the solutions and methods that are already practiced by our school and look at areas where we could improve further. Our school emits carbon in three broad categories, transport, energy, and waste. Transport. The transport used by the students and staff for commute leads to a significant emission of carbon footprint. The fact that only about 35% of students use school bus facility is shocking. Use of public transport is really helpful for the environment. And if that's not convenient, then carpooling is another great option. The school tries its best to make school transport safe and easily available to all to encourage its use. The school buses, all the tires are resold. So, you know, we don't dispose them just like that. The tires are resold and the batteries are always exchanged. So, whenever we have to buy a new one, we make sure that the old battery is given to the vendor for again, yeah, reuse. How is the school encouraging you to school bus facility and has it increased over the years? Yes, here in our school we have 11 buses flying on different routes in and around the Manu city and also the outskirts up to 25 kilometers. So yes, uh, the number of students have increased and uh, this uh, two years back during the pandemic uh, we replaced our buses, we replaced the uh, 16 seater buses with two uh, bigger buses, 34 uh, seater seaters because uh, there's a uh, lot of requests uh, and demand for school bus and even in this year also uh, I've got up to 70 to 80 uh, additional requests and users uh, for the new academy here. What would you say to parents to encourage the use of school transport? Yeah, using school bus uh, would be of great help for the uh, so parents to save their time and also we provide uh, the best facility, we just uh, offer it as a service and also uh, our school bus is very safe. We uh, follow a safe uh, practices uh, since we follow this HSCP uh, policy in school. So all our buses are well maintained and uh, the service uh, repair and maintenance is done on time and also uh, the safety procedure is followed. So opting for school bus uh, would be uh, helpful for students uh, to uh, parents to save time and uh, not only that to ease the traffic uh, congestion. Energy. The electricity consumption of the school also contributes to the carbon emission. While this is something we cannot stop, we can take small steps to reduce it. For instance, switching off the lights in the classroom if sunlight is adequate. Apart from these small steps, the school has also taken initiatives for optimum energy usage. In the classrooms, we have all LED lights now. So we have nearly changed 200 CFL lamps into LED to reduce the, uh, you know, the power consumption. We, in addition to the lights, we also change the fans to reduce uh, more efficient motors, fans with more efficient motors to reduce power consumption. Waste. The school generates a lot of waste on a daily basis and this can be put into three main categories. Paper waste, food and water waste and single-use plastic waste. 
for each of these the first step is to try and reduce the waste itself so to begin with i'll tell you about the sewage treatment a sewage water treatment plant that's right next to the building though you know it's a very unsightly thing that is there but it does a great job of treating the sewage water and this water is then used for gardening and uh, the grey water is used for uh, flushing and uh, in the toilets and all that so in addition to that we also make sure that we uh, collect uh, i mean we segregate our garbage at source so you must have noticed that there are two kinds of bins kept there so this is to ensure that the wet waste and dry waste are segregated at source and then we uh, hand it over to the city corporation for the rest of the process also the uh, the uh, wet waste that's generated in the cafeteria is taken by the vendor and then uh, you know composted so we make sure that even that is taken care of so um, in school we make sure that we do not print unless it's absolutely necessary necessary in the school office and uh, you would have noticed most of our uh, you know uh, documents are all digitally stored we hardly print any uh, documents and uh, we make sure that we use both sides of the paper so no paper <coughs> i mean no printed paper it goes waste i mean the blank side is also yeah. used so we make sure of that and uh, you might have noticed this e waste drive that we uh, organize so we dispose of all the e waste in a very responsible manner and we make sure that you know we collect e waste not just from the school but also from the students and their extended family also every year we make sure that we collect old books and old clothes and hand it over to the mobility center for repurpose it is said that a school generates 2000 pages of paper waste in a day so for a school working 180 uh, 180 days it's 3600 pages of paper waste another is a school being school the students and teachers use whole lot of pen and other single use plastic it also contributes to the uh, single use plastic waste so what i feel is normalization of green thinking is what we have to do in education system and uh, that is how we can limit our uh, carbon footprints the school takes a lot of measures already to be environmentally friendly and it continues to keep improving One thing that can be done in the near future is tracking of carbon footprint which will further help reduce the carbon footprint. So mom do you think tracking of carbon footprint will eventually help in reducing it? Yes of course see how they say what gets measured gets managed well. So suppose you are trying to uh, lose weight what is the first thing that you do? Uh track your calories. Exactly so we first see what goes into our plate. what has how many calories and then we try to reduce it it's the same way with carbon emissions first you have to be aware of what is producing the carbon emissions so the first step is definitely tracking our carbon emissions at least annually through our different activities maybe i think we are preparing our students for that only through various activities like your documentary making or you're having a panel discussion so our first step to tracking our carbon emissions is this where we are going to find out what are the different activities that is leading to carbon emissions through the students like you and then the next thing that we are going to do is then track how much carbon emissions and try to reduce so i think definitely tracking is the first step and the most important step thank you as a school we very much aware of the fact that you know we have young learners here who are quite impressionable and it is our belief that you know all of us have to walk the talk otherwise things you know, our learners will not learn anything so we don't believe in preaching telling uh, learners that you know do this or don't do that in fact we ourselves take up a lot of initiatives to make sure that the school 
minimizes its carbon footprint. I wouldn't say that we've been successful, you know, uh, you know, in uh, making a big impact, but definitely we have tried different uh, methods to minimize the carbon footprint in the school. 